In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the ArcSoft software that comes with the Epson document cameras. First thing is you have to open the program. And I'm using a Mac, so the Mac interface is going to be a little bit different than the PC. Mainly over in this section here on the PC version, you'll have buttons that will allow you to post directly to YouTube. The Mac version doesn't. So let me just explain a couple of the buttons. This is the camera capture button. So this is what enables you to capture images from your document camera. This button is the editing button and it allows you to edit videos that already exist. And there's not a lot you can do with the edit as I'll show you in a second. And then of course this is just keeping all your files together. I have quite a few video captures, over 200 of them, because I flipped you know, two classes. One tip that makes your life a lot easier when it comes to using uh, this software is making sure you know where your media folder is. When you install the software, it defaults to putting the media folder in your documents uh, folder. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. I didn't like that because I would want to find my videos to upload. So if you want to change the file location, uh, you use this little uh, file folder in media, it's labeled media folder when you hover your cursor over it and you click on it and you get to choose where your media folder is. So mine is saved uh, on an external hard drive and it's a folder called video capture. If you want to change that, you can you know, click the browse button and you can put it wherever you want. Now I suggest that you put it on the desktop if you're going to make a lot of videos because then you know exactly where all your capture videos are. But if you're okay with it being in do uh, documents and you remember that, that's fine. And once you choose desktop, for example, and you just choose to make a folder, um, you're gonna see a little folder show up. Oopsie, okay, press okay. And you're gonna see little folders show up. See over in this corner over here underneath my hard drive, I have a folder that's called capture. And uh, so all my raw footage that I capture is going to be inside that folder. Now, if you wanna go back and change it like I do, I don't wanna save mine to my desktop. I wanna put mine on my hard drive. I already have a capture folder there. And if I just choose that and press okay, then all the videos that I'd already recorded are there in that folder. This here is full screen mode, so this is if you want to just see what you're, you're capturing on the camera and it doesn't have any of the other buttons or anything, then you can just click full screen mode and to exit full screen mode you just click on that and it takes you back. And uh, I use the full screen mode when I'm projecting what I'm recording on the document camera so people can see as I record uh, what I'm recording and what I'm writing. This button here is for when you want to disconnect your camera and you're going to shut it down. Now this button here, the settings button, is actually very important because if you want to record instead, not from your document camera, but from say the built-in camera on your laptop so that you can get a picture of your face or whatever, then under the setting it defaults to video as the first uh, window. And right here is where you can change your, your camera. So if your laptop or computer has more than one camera enabled, this is where you're going to get it. And if you plug your Epson in and you had the program open ahead of time and you're not finding the Epson, just click refresh device and it'll refresh whatever device it has in there. This program also works with the red ladybug document cameras that came with the innovation stations. So when you plug it in and you go to video, you just have to make sure you find the Epson. Now when you're using a PC, I noticed that it, uh, this, document, uh, this software, even when your document camera is hooked up, it will default to your webcam on your laptop. So you're going to want to change the device and make sure you remember that it's under this uh, tools button here and under video. And this is the video format that it's going to save as. Sometimes you have an option, sometimes you don't. On the Mac you don't. It's going to save your videos as MOV files, but on the PC you can change it. Now, video quality is really important for file size. If you want like super HD quality giant files to upload that'll take an hour to upload to YouTube, then you make sure your video quality is super awesome way over here. I just keep mine in the middle, no big deal. 
Now over here is really important because it says video name and so this is the name it's going to tag your videos with and then it's going to tag them sequentially. So if you don't mind all your videos being named like video one, two, three, four, five, then you know you can leave it because it defaults to video. I changed mine to test. And so if I want to change it to flipped, then the file is going to be saved as flipped and so that I can find it better. So I suggest that before you start recording, you go to this tab, you set up your video, you set up your uh, video quality, the kind of file format you want, and then you set the title because it'll be easy to find that video in the capture folder. If you're like me and you have 300 videos in your capture folder, you don't want them to be labeled video 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 300. That's really annoying. Image quality is next. Uh, when, once again, I have it as fine. This is more uh, for using the document camera as a camera, like a still camera, not a uh, video camera. Uh, well, once again, remember it's under the settings, and then you could set the file format that the, the picture is going to save as a JPEG or a bitmap, and then the image quality, and the name, just like before, and then the number of photos it takes in a burst. In this case, it does five, and you could change that to just a single image, and then of course you can change that date thing. Now audio is also going to be important um, because my document camera has a sketchy microphone and I don't like using my document camera's microphone so instead I use the internal mic on my laptop and so if you click on this you can choose the mic. I don't use my Epson mic. Um, I'm going to use the internal mic on my laptop. If you have an external mic plugged in it'll pick that up and if you notice the sound on the mic that you're using for your document camera is weird, if it pitches you up or if it speeds you up or if it pops, then you want to use the internal mic on your laptop or an external mic. And then time lapse is another option. It's not going to take a still photo, it's going to take a series of photos that you can play back as a time lapse photography and that's the other option you have. Um, if you're going to use a document camera for what I use it for, which is primarily to record video, then I just check the video and audio tabs to make sure they're the way I want. Um, and then I just press OK when I have everything I need. Now another important button is this one over here. This is how many pixels your video is going to be. It will default to something incredibly large, like 8 megapixels, 2 megapixels, whatever. And if you have that, then you're shooting incredibly high quality HD video. It's just your file size is going to be enormous, which means uh, you're not going to be able to store very many videos on your computer. And worse, it's going to take forever for you to upload and share your video. I like to default to the 800 by 600 or the 1024 by 768. I usually go 800 by 600 because I'm not uh, shooting high definition video. Um, I'm just posting it to YouTube. This thing over here is all are all of my videos that I have in that media folder and you'll see that I have quite a few in there. The one that is highlighted in blue is the one that is the last one you made. So the very last video you make is going to be in the upper left hand corner. And this was just a test movie I made when I was showing everyone how to use the document camera. And if you don't like it, make sure it's highlighted in blue and you can just click on the trash button, the little delete button, and you can delete that video and it, it goes away. You can print pictures, you can email the video you want. Uh, this is to find the video in a file, so if you don't know exactly where your file is, this will open it up in the finder so you can see where the file is located. And of course, this is to preview the files, um, which I'm not going to do. Now this section here is what my document camera is picking up. So I just put my hand under the document camera and so this is what is going to be recorded. The way I set my recording up is I'll have my, I'm right handed, so I'm, where my right hand is will be my camera and off camera, which you can't see, is my laptop. So my laptop is, is set up in this direction, see there's my laptop. Uh, I can when I'm writing, I can just quickly glance over to my left and I can see the, what's actually being recorded. Because if you just focus on this paper here and you don't actually look at what's being recorded, you might be writing and, and you're not actually, you can't see it on the screen. Alright, reducing noise is if you have a lot of background noise. I don't usually mess with that. I do my noise or sound editing on my, my Mac. This, of course, is just to take a still picture, and it just literally just takes a picture. This will take a five-photo burst, so it just takes five pictures really quickly in a row. 
This is the starting time lapse. So that's if you, you want to show a demonstration, you want to speed it up, then you could record this. And that was under the time lapse uh, menu under this setting over here. And this button down here is the record video. And that's the, the option that I use most often. Now let's um, record some video really quick. So if I click on the movie camera, you will see that the time will show up on this screen here. So I can keep track of how long I'm recording but it doesn't show up in the actual recording itself. This time is just for you as you're recording. So I was recording a blank piece of paper for about 15 seconds. And so now I'm recording my fingers wiggling. So once you have recorded what you want to record, you'll notice that there's a little pause button and that's actually kind of a misleading button. It makes you think that you can pause the video but you're not really pausing the video. What you're doing when you press pause is you literally stop recording. So the video no longer can record. It's a, it's, its own separate little file. Now you'll notice that a new file appeared in this corner. And so when you click on it, you double click it, I should yeah. say, the video you recorded shows up. I'm gonna mute it. And uh, it's, it was 10 minutes and 46 seconds, mostly of me talking about stuff. And then, see, it recorded everything that we talked about, including a little hamster um, and all the math and the pens. And so that's my video, and it has been recorded. Now, in terms of editing, the application has very limited editing capability. You can um, change the brightness, you can change the contrast, and you can trim the beginning and trim the end. And I noticed most of the trimming that I had to do when I first started was at the beginning or the end because I would forget, well, how do I stop this recording? And I recorded myself saying, how did I stop this recording? And so this little red bar here, if I extend it out, it will trim this red section of the video. And if the beginning was a bunch of dead space or whatever, I can trim the beginning. And that's the extent of the editing on this. Um, and if I want to save it, I can save it, save the original file. If I want to save as, if I want to keep the original file, and I can reset it back to what it was if I want to just leave it alone. If you want to do more sophisticated editing, you're going to have to get some editing software. If you are lucky enough to own a Mac, then those things automatically come with iMovie, and that's what I use to edit. If you don't have a, P uh, a Mac and you have a PC, then you can you know, Google search for uh, iMovie equivalents, and you can find some, some editing software that way, some of which is free. And if you have an iPad, then there is a version of iMovie for the iPad, so you can always do your editing that way.